Take this okay. My name is Tim Harrigan. I'm Associate Professor of Biosystems and Agricultural Engineering at Michigan State University. Okay. And whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, about uh, in 2003, we had been looking for a way to integrate manure and cover crops in, into no-till farming situations. And I'd done some work with the airway tillage tool. It's a low disturbance tillage tool. And I got to, to thinking that we could possibly uh, integrate the seed in with the manure uh, and uh, fly the manure and get uh, a fair cover crop. Uh, so we began working with that and we've done a number of things uh, and it's turned out quite successful. And in fact, much more successful than, than I had even hoped it would be. We've done several crops. We've done forage crops, red clover, white clover, fesuloleum for, for improving pastures. We've done, um, you know, we've done rye, we've done wheat. We've done several crops, oilseed radish that are suitable, more suitable for some row crops and specialty crops. Uh, annual ryegrass, of course, and, uh, and some other crops that work well in a wide range of situations. And we've had real good luck. Now, what we'd have to do to make the system work, uh, of course, we have to have a low disturbance tillage. But basically, we're, we're putting the seed directly in the slurry tank. So we get a load of manure, and we dump our seed directly in the tank. Now, I've been using the, the same rate of seed that I would when I'm drilling. For instance, if I'm going to seed 12 pounds per acre of annual ryegrass, I weigh out enough seed to, for, the, for the manure to cover uh, whatever it might be, a half acre or whatever it might be. I weigh that out and we'll dump it right in the tank. Now, what keeps the seed uh, uniformly distributed and in suspension is the fact that we've got a PTO pump here. And on the spreader I use, which is a 3,000 gallon tank, this PTO pump has a capacity of about 1,600 gallons per minute. So if I put it out through a splash tank in the back, I can put out 1,600 gallons per minute. Now, I've been using a 12-foot airway. In order to get the rates that I want with that, which are 6 to 8,000 gallons per acre, I only need about 600 gallons per minute. So we've got a, we've got a gate valve on this that we use, uh, and all spreaders have this. Uh, we, we can calibrate that, open that gate valve up enough so that we get the rate that we want out the back, and what doesn't come out the back is recycled through the tank. And that back, that uh, bypass flow through with the PTO into the tank is what keeps the seed uniformly uh, distributed in suspension. So then we've got our seed in the tank. We've got it uniformly distributed. Uh, so we've got a seed-laden manure slurry, nutrient-wrenched slurry. Uh, right up here, for instance, is that gate valve that I talked about. Uh, that we, when this is open, it's all the way shot. If it's closed, it's all the way open, or vice versa. But uh, the point is we can calibrate that and get, get the flow rate we want. Now, the tools that we're using are low disturbance. It's a low disturbance rolling tine aerator. Uh, and the, the reason I picked is because it's suitable for no-till farming operations. And a real challenge for a lot of our livestock folks in Michigan is that they wanted the advantage of no-till farming, but it didn't work with manure. You know, so we wanted a way to apply the manure. We wanted a way to get the nutrients, stabilize it so we're not getting overland flow, getting better infiltration, less ammonia, uh, nitrogen losses, getting all those benefits. You know, so we're, we, we began working with the airway. Now this, this is a row crop airway unit, and it uh, doesn't have all the features that I like on, on the a field uh, airway unit. For instance, these are fixed at almost a straight angle. What I like for slurry seeding is I like to open up the soil a little bit more. We create a roughened surface. The airway, when, it's the, when we shift this gang angle, actually uh, to about a seven and a half or 10 degree angle, is quite, uh, actually does a lot of fracturing, lateral movement, some, a little bit of lifting, but, but it retains almost all the crop residue. But it creates cracks and fissures that allow the seed-laden slurry to infiltrate quickly, and that slurry carries the cover crop seed, the annual ryegrass seed, uh, right down into the soil, uh, so that, uh, it, and that's where it finds what I call protected microsites. You know, it's an area where it's not going to be at the surface, where it's going to wet, wet and dry, uh, a lot of heating and cooling, wetting and drying, a lot of, you know, extreme cycling that's going to make it hard for seed germination. But it gets down below the surface, it's protected, and the seeds find a, a germination site. You know, so another important point is that that seed-laden slurry is dropped through this distributor. So it's evenly distributed all the way across. The seed-laden slurry then comes down and drops through these drop tubes that's right behind the aeration teeth. That's important because the seed and the nutrients are concentrated then right in the tilled soil. 
you know, we, we've got a divot or a, well, a tilled, a roughly tilled surface with, with uh, soil uh, aggregates and cracks and fissures here. Uh, and that seed is, is concentrated right in that area. So it's, it's, it's almost a banding operation. And that keeps the seed in the areas where it has the best chance to germinate and grow in those protected sites. Now with a crop like annual ryegrass, it's, it's important to keep it distributed in the tank. Now with some crops like red, red clover or white clover or oilseed radish, they're small seeds that are a little bit dense. They will distribute nicely in the tank. Uh, now with annual ryegrass, it's a little bit different because we have a very air, kind of an airy seed. And if we just dump this in the top of the tank, we can see that our seed will just flow right across the surface. You know, so what, what I'd like to do then uh, is get the, the uh, manure uh, or the, uh, the seed uh, in the water. I like to get these in, and when I'm uh, outspreading one, I like to prepare uh, a, a pailful of uh, water with the seed. And I like to just push it down and let it kind of waterlog a little bit. So while I'm outspreading uh, one load, this is waiting for me. When I get back, I've got basically the right amount of seed that I need for the amount of manure in my tank. It's waterlogged, so it's not going to float on the surface. It'll distribute quickly and evenly in the tank. And that's how I, I do these types of seeds that are, well, grass seeds, basically, that are more fluffy and, air, and have a tendency to entrain or trap air. You know, so that's how we, we keep uh, the seed in the tank and distribute it. So I'm not sure where we want to go now.